Where do we stand right now with the case? What, what are the latest things uh, that people need to be watching out for? I know we've got the timeline that's been extended maybe to March uh, of next year. So this thing just seems like it's never going to end. Yeah, it is dragging on a little bit. I guess the latest news came out two days ago was that Judge Netburn, uh, it's Judge Torres and Judge Netburn who are both presiding over the case. And Netburn is calling for a conference next Tuesday in person between both parties to kind of hash out what the SEC is now saying. They they started off saying that the Hinman speech and the emails that went into it, it was all his personal opinion, was nothing to do with the agency. The judge ruled, okay, well, if that's the case, then you will turn over these documents to Ripple and we can see what's in the emails. The second she did that, they came out and said, oh, actually, just kidding. We think it should be protected under attorney-client privilege now because, you know, Hinman was acting as a client of our SEC attorneys when he asked for those you know, opinions to go into the speech. So that is happening on Tuesday. And I believe you can call in and actually listen to the proceedings mm-hmm. and listen to the uh, both parties kind of give their side. Um, I spoke to lawyers, you know, close to Ripple, um, and they they seem to think that there could be, you know, she might even come out with a, a verdict on, not a verdict for the case, obviously, but a um, an opinion on whether those emails should be shown on Tuesday when she's heard from both parties. I think right now she's trying to, she probably knows what she wants to rule on, but she, you know, wants to hear it gets clarification from the SEC, clarification from Ripple, and then she might make a decision then and there. Uh, she might not. We might still be waiting for, you know, her to make a few more decisions. Um, so I think that is definitely a big thing to watch. That'll be Tuesday, uh, Tuesday afternoon, I believe it too. Um, but it's, uh, it's, that'll be interesting. I, the timeline itself, it's it's been pushed back, as you know. Um, mm-hmm. I think the judge uh, Torres came out in the end of April, and she kind of said that you know she's going to move everything back. Um, motions to exclude the expert testimony that's due at the end of August now, um, and then these summary judgments have to be briefed by November. So those are key dates. And something interesting that happened recently, as you know, is that John Deaton filed a request to be uh, to not to give evidence because he's not allowed to and. Uh, has a Michi status, but to kind of um, challenge what the SEC's expert witness said about the XRP holders and what their real expectations were when they bought XRP. This guy's name is Patrick Duty. He's uh, been called by the SEC before. He was called in the Telegram case, I believe, and said the same kind of similar thing. Telegram was being accused of the same thing, selling unregistered securities. And he said that any reasonable buyers of the Telegram tokens could you know, at the time should have respect, expected profits from Telegram. Therefore, you know, they were in the wrong. He's saying this about XRP holders as well. And John represents, you know, over 67,000 right. XRP holders like me and you who just, you know, might have bought it because they thought it was interesting or they had hopes for it or, you know, whatever, whatever the reason that they bought it is, they didn't know Ripple existed. And so they did not have reasonable expectations that Ripple was going to give them any kind of profit. So he's filed that. The SEC has... Uh, filed a motion as well to to push back on John. So that's also a thing to watch. And I think we'll be getting, you know, a resolution from that, hopefully from the judge or um, John in the next couple of days. So a lot of things to watch. Uh, it's a very interesting case. And I feel like there's there's some lull sometimes and it's like, oh, is this case ever going to end? It's like, what's Talk next? And there's so much waiting time, but it's 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 got some things coming down the pike soon. Well, you know, in crypto, they talk about a page shill a lot. <clears throat> it seems to me as Patrick Duty is a paid shill for the SEC. When you say shill, just just educate me on that. So what is a yeah, the shill? Word, is that someone who basically, basically what it means is somebody who just comes out and talks about a certain project or a certain thing in an over the top way that they may not actually believe that in what they're saying. There's no way that Patrick Duty believes what he's saying because he hasn't spoken to any XRP holder, correct? Right. Apparently, apparently he has not spoken to any XRP holders. And, you know, John, meanwhile, has spoken to, to plenty who have said yeah. the exact opposite of what Duty mm-hmm. is saying. Like, these people had no idea Ripple existed when they bought XRP. And, and, and doesn't he get else paid I, I, for these appearances? Who? Duty? Patrick Duty. I am not sure on that, but I do know that he works currently for a private consulting firm that was granted a government contract funded pretty much entirely by the SEC. It was a $4 million contract. It happened Mm. in, I believe it was 2018, they were granted. So 
you know, here again with the conflict of interest, right? It's like he is talking on behalf of the SEC <laughs> and the SEC, you know, is basically funding the company he works for. So I think, you know, Ripple might, Ripple lawyers might capitalize on that if they want to push back and kind of ex, um, expel that testimony from, from the court. Yeah, well, I, I think we just can just see these conflicts of interest. And it, every time someone comes into this case and makes themselves a, a public figure, such as Patrick Duty, the Ripple community is going to destroy them. <laughs> it's going to pull every single thing from them, their background, every conflict of interest, every connection, every tie. And so people need to think twice before they come out yeah. uh, you know, for the SEC. Now, after this case is over, do you think, we're going to see any changes to the SEC? It depends the outcome, I really mm -hmm. think. I know that, you know, Brad has said, Brad Garlinghouse has said that you know, for Ripple, if they win, then they're going to go IPO. And I believe yeah. that most likely Ripple will, it's a very successful business overseas already. I believe that it can be successful here too. We'll probably see, you know, a big boom for them. Um, if the SEC loses, I think we will see a change in the way that they're going after these crypto companies. I think there's going to be more, hopefully more disclosure um, from them. I think if they lose this lawsuit or they are forced to settle, um, then that's going to be a, a, a key factor in that. I, but you never know with the SEC. And I, I, I say it all the time. It's like, you never know what they're going to come out with next. So yeah. you, know, you would hope that there will be changes. Uh, if, they, if they win and Ripple loses, I think you know, nothing's going to change. And you know, possibly there will be more uh, enforcement, uh, more uh, regulation by enforcement, which seems to be Gary Gensler's preferred method of ruling. So we will see. But I, I, you know, I do think, I think everybody thinks that there needs to be changes at yeah. the SEC for sure. Um, just in terms of, oh, no, just in terms of clarity too, because, you know, Jeremy Kaufman, who is the CEO of Library, I've talked to him on a few occasions. He tells me that the, you know, every time he's tried to talk to the SEC, they basically just say, oh, no, we can't give advice. We can't tell you if you're doing this or that wrong. So it's just like, just tell me, you know, what am I doing wrong? How do I operate better? And, you know, tell me how I can follow the rules. So that hopefully will change. Yeah, well, we've been talking the, about that a lot because what, what we've seen is, the SEC and the CFTC, really, uh, they want to put the cart before the horse. That They want to go after everybody before they create the regulation that people are supposed to follow. And that doesn't make any sense. And that's going to continue an ambiguity. And I think that might be the big change that comes out of this. Uh, because when the SEC loses, I believe they will lose pretty dramatically here. I, I think there ultimately there will be a settlement because it's just so much in Ripple's favor to be able to take a settlement instead of going all the way to the end and, and seeing what ultimately the judge will decide. Uh, but I, I think even if we get all that, what the SEC is going to find is it's going to be impossible for them to win these cases when they don't have the regu regulation and the clarity. So hopefully that's what we'll see. Right now, it seems, though, that the SEC is the most, and Gary Gensler himself, the most self-unaware people that exist in the world. That's the way it is. Everybody is looking this, and everybody who's been following this case knows where this is going. So we'll, we'll have to see what happens with it. You know, maybe we'll get big changes.